Mjolnir powered assault armor. Miraculous exoskeletons worn exclusively by the upper echelons of the UNSC fighting force, the Spartans, and most famously worn by Master Chief Petty Officer John 117. While Spartans alone are near legendary individuals and are phenomenal in their capabilities on the battlefield, with a plethora of cybernetic enhancements, biological augmentations and genetic alterations to make them superhuman in nearly every sense of the word, their success and reputation is earned in no small part by the technological marvel that is the Mjolnir powered assault armour. In this investigation we have been given unbridled access to the legendary Mark VI Mjolnir armour, the very same version the Master Chief himself wears. We will break down this remarkable armour to a level of detail never before available. To outline the suit, the Mark VI suit was designed by Dr. Catherine Holsey in tandem with the Spartan II program and built in the Special Warfare Center in Seongnam in the nation of Korea. The Mark VI is capable of taking full advantage of the physical capabilities of a Spartan. The suit is constructed in overlapping layers capable of stopping all small arms fire, but with the adoption of a full body energy shield, can take a great deal more punishment. It is environmentally sealed, capable of extravehicular activity and operations in toxic atmospheres. It increases the Spartan's strength and speed flawlessly, utilising the Spartan neural interface. It is hardened against electromagnetic pulses, extremes of temperature and radiation, and uses filters capable of scrubbing toxins and bacteria from the local environment to 100% efficiency. The Mark VI also has a list of specialty armour components to complement various applications, but on this occasion, we will focus exclusively on the standard Mark VI, as it is one of the most recognisable versions of Mjolnir, and is one of the most sophisticated and powerful examples of wartime technology ever developed. And now we will break it down to its core components. In the interest of simplicity, despite the fact that Mjolnir is anything but simple, we will work from the outermost layers inwards, analysing every layer and component as we go. Now we begin. While the most apparent outer layer is the suit's muscular olive drab plating, in truth, the outermost layer of the Mark VI is its energy shields. Backward engineered from Kig Yar energy shield gauntlets, various other recovered Covenant technology was also utilised and then improved upon for the Mark V, then innovated again for the Mark VI. The shields provide total body coverage including the bottom of the boots and palms of the hand, should the Spartan choose in EVA manoeuvres. When on terra firma, the shielding can be dialed back to less than a hair's width to grant sure footing and the ability to hold and use weapons without issue, while still maintaining full coverage across the rest of the body. Rated at 15 megajoules or 4.2 kilowatt hours, the shields are very powerful and recharge over 50% faster than its predecessors, taking energy directly from the suit's power supply unit. The shielding works by oscillating an electromagnetic field from the shield projectors located at key points on the armour surface. This EM field envelops a high energy plasma, also emitted by the shield projectors, and then is held in the EM field. This enables the shielding to completely repulse ballistic projectiles, although sustained fire and combined kinetic force distorts the electromagnetic field, leading to field collapse during which time the Spartan must gain cover and wait for recharge. Plasma projectiles used primarily by Covenant infantry is absorbed by the shield, although again sustained fire leads to overcharge that breaks down the electromagnetic field and again renders the Spartan vulnerable to continued attack. If the incoming projectile total energy exceeds the 15 megajoule rating of the energy shield, the field almost instantly collapses, cancelling out 15 megajoules of the energy of the projectile but allowing any excess to be transferred to the armour itself and ultimately, whether that excess is survivable is highly dependent on the armour plating's ability to withstand the barrage. Any energy transfer to the shield caused by incoming fire, heat, radiation or kinetic force will cause the normally invisible energy shield to flare, glowing an ever more intense golden shimmer as the shield takes more punishment. All in all, the shielding is a stark improvement on even the Sangali personal energy shield systems, a point that was deemed significant enough to install a failsafe to prevent this innovative technology from falling back into enemy hands. We will explore this later. While it was planned for subsequent Mjolnir versions to have the ability to shape and overlap their energy shields, including possible aerofoils, this advancement never saw wide-scale application. The main armour plating is fastened to the underlying substructure via custom tool tamper-proof bolts that can only be removed by specialist tools. 
The outer surface is coated with a refractive finish, refined from a crystalline metallic composite giving it a nearly iridescent sheen. This coating disperses and distributes heat from directed energy weapons over a much larger surface area, reducing overall single-point heating of the plate that could result in the compromising of the structural integrity of the plate. The exact titanium alloy used is still a closely guarded secret, but in analysing their structure, we can reveal that while some of these plates are made solidly of this alloy, Others are in fact hollow plates, composed of equally thick outer and inner plates with up to a dozen separate leaves of titanium sandwiched together inside. This is much more effective at stopping high velocity and armor piercing rounds than a solid plate of equal thickness. The plates themselves are impenetrable to most small arms fire and can take several glancing shots from armor piercing rounds before breaching. An AP round that does manage to breach the outermost layer would lose a great deal of its kinetic force in the initial penetration. The subsequent leaves would continue to slow the projectile to a standstill, and if the round still managed to penetrate, the innermost surface is angled to redirect the kinetic force on a tangent to its entry vector, minimizing overpenetration and redirecting the round away from the wearer. Only rounds of caliber sizes aimed more so at anti-material or anti-vehicular applications have the capacity to breach the armor with ease. The armor plates also feature auto repair and bypass nodes. This system is reactive to nanomachines and grants the armor plating the ability to repair or heal damaged sections, as well as continue function should the connection to the suit's main computational systems be broken or damaged. While both of these systems allow the plating to repair and continue function, significant enough damage can lead to these two systems to fail and any further damage to be irreparable, leading to plate scarring. The coloration of the plates can be customized, but the standard shoe comes in an olive drab green with some of the plates around the joints being matte black to blend with a titanium nanocomposite bodysuit. The plates are all custom built based on the physical dimensions of the intended wearer, where it would seem logical to manufacture the plates in larger units, for example the entire forearm, the shins, chest and back. In reality, every anatomical section is made up of a dozen smaller individual plates locked together into the component pieces of the suit. The plating of the armour is designed to be structurally limited in its motion, this means that the plates near joints are designed to hit each other to prevent the risk of hyperextension of the joints, which could result in serious injury. Some of the plates are implanted with various additional systems such as energy shield emitters, obvious by the small visible light they produce, and magnetic weapon and ammo holsters, as well as an array of sensors for additional situational awareness and systems input, including, but not limited to, absolute pressure sensors, temperature sensors, air quality sensors, motion detector featuring a quantum mirror for ultra-fine tracking resolution, ultra-clear audio microphone array and auxiliary loudspeaker system for close proximity conversation, air intake and exhaust ports, electronic compass, altimeter, accelerometer and built-in torch. A very impressive array that all play to the Spartan situational awareness, which we will explore in depth when we look at the helmet. By far one of the more impressive components of Mark VI, and indeed the entire Mjolnir range, is located within the back armour. The most notable and prominent components on the back of Mjolnir are two large hardened modules over each shoulder blade within which you can find a power supply control unit responsible for distribution of power across the suit based on where it is needed at any given time, and the more impressive mini nuclear fusion reactor. Nuclear fusion is one of the most significant breakthroughs in energy generation technology. Taking two atoms of deuterium, isotopes of hydrogen, and fusing them together under high pressure via very powerful electromagnetic fields. The result is a helium-3 nucleus and the release of huge amounts of energy. The real marvel of the fusion pack is how small the reactor has been made half the size of the standard fusion packs carried by marines, yet able to produce continuous power for 15 years usage before maintenance and replacement are needed. The reactors are encased in a specially hardened casing, so as to be as protected as possible from breach or damage. Each unit is completely sealed, electromagnetically shielded and radiation proof. As a failsafe, there is a system that can be implemented to self-destruct the suit to keep the technological advancements it contains from enemy hands. A serial code is input, and the system overcharges the fusion pack. The result is the incineration of anything within 10 meters, followed by a detonation that completely destroys the suit, its occupant, and anything nearby, guaranteeing that nothing is left for the enemy to use or salvage. The modules that encase the fusion pack and the PSU also contain thrusters. These thrusters are used for movement in zero-g as well as limited bursts of speed and agility on the battlefield. They take their thrust directly from the fusion reactor by using a vector drive exhaust to produce thrust. 
The highly charged plasma medium that exists within the reactor is routed through an electromagnetically shielded conduit and expelled from the back of the thruster by a shaped variable repulsive electromagnetic field, allowing the half-ton Mjolnir to accelerate to around 100 km an hour for a short distance, or to very precisely adjust its vector in zero-g over much longer durations. It has also been witnessed to reduce impact from an unassisted freefall, but this is considered outside of its operational range. It is worth noting that the current Gen 2 Mjolnir systems feature the Anubis thruster, a greatly enhanced variant allowing much more mobility and usage in applications outside of the Gen 1's operational capacity. Next, we come to the matte black titanium nanocomposite bodysuit. This component is made of a nanoscale titanium alloy. While the other alloyed materials are still strictly classified, it's reasonable to assume that carbon plays a significant role, and the suit is particularly good at dissipating heat from directed energy weapons. It is highly flexible but very strong, adding additional protection from ballistic and energy-based projectiles. The suit also incorporates some thinner matte black titanium plating at the inner thighs, abdomen, elbows, knees and various other locations of biological articulation, facilitating continued freedom of movement but simultaneously giving protection to these vulnerable locations. The gloves feature sensors that detect a weapon being held and displays the relevant information about the weapon to the suit's situational awareness systems. It's a simplistic system as most UNSC issue weapons, and indeed civilian issue weapons, have electronic components to display ammunition capacity, so the suit simply detects this information directly from the weapon's internal electronics. For Covenant weaponry, the suit effectively detects the physical profile, weight, among other things, and compares them against a database of known weaponry, and once a match is found, the suit displays the information. For unknown weapon systems, the suit usually doesn't display any information at all. The titanium in this layer of the suit acts highly efficiently as a Faraday cage, making the inner layers of the suit completely impenetrable by electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic pulses. The bodysuit has numerous structural hardpoints located across its surface. These are designed to be the main connection interface between the heavy outer plating and the softer, more flexible bodysuit. The plates are bolted onto these via custom-tooled tamper-proof bolts, and some by tongue and groove connection. These structural hardpoints redirect the weight of the armour plates through an internal titanium substructure, meaning the wearer doesn't feel the weight of the suit. A wise decision given that the total weight of the suit is a thousand pounds or half a metric tonne. The titanium nanocomposite suit is the last visible outer layer of Mjolnir, as all the following components are protected under the soft armour of this suit and the hard armour plates. At the innermost surface of this suit is the pressure seal, this component is a resistive composite that is entirely airtight and waterproof. It is treated with a coating of nanoparticulate synthetic copolymer specifically designed to be super hydrophobic, vacuum proof, radiation proof to alpha and beta waves, and resistant to gamma waves. This component allows a pressurized and breathable atmosphere to be maintained at all times, down to a zero ambient pressure and up to an extreme ambient pressure. The pressure seal is very powerful and from incidents involving overpressurizing of the hydrostatic gel layer and low orbital insertions, we can calculate the seals have an estimated breach strength of around 12,000 psi of internal pressure. The suit also houses a large quantity of internal computational systems, including the Mark VI BIOS, which is the firmware written to initially boot up the suit's systems, identifying, testing, and initializing them as needed, and updates to the BIOS allow new hardware to be supported. It also contains auxiliary power systems between the shoulder blades, capable of powering the internal movement and articulation systems to a low level, significant enough, however, to allow the wearer to move relatively unencumbered, though without the additional speed or power the full Mjolnir offers. Although a Spartan wearing the titanium nanocomposite bodysuit is still a formidable combination. We are now through the armoured sections of the suit, so we can get a closer look at some of the more interesting components of Mjolnir. Many of these components occupy a common area or layer of the suit as a whole, so we will address each component as we come across them. The next components go hand in hand, the first being the force multiplying circuits, a series of systems found in locations of movement throughout the armour. They basically increase the power and speed of voluntary movements by the user, making hand-to-hand -hand combat with stronger or faster adversaries much easier, especially when engaging with Sangeli or Jural Hane, both being physically superior to humans. The circuits are difficult to adjust to, 
as small motions can be translated to large dangerous ones if not conducted correctly. It is for this reason that only individuals with carbide ceramic ossification augmentations can use the armor, as normal bones simply aren't strong enough to withstand the force and speed these circuits create. The other system is the reactive metal liquid crystal layer. This layer is composed of a polymerized lithium niobacene, a material originally used to diffuse the static electrical buildup in ship's hulls during faster than light slip space travel. It is a piezoelectric material, meaning when it is mechanically deformed, it creates an electrical charge, a reaction which also works in reverse. When an electrical charge is applied to it, it mechanically deforms in shape. The material is amorphous, meaning it doesn't appear to have a crystalline structure, and thus flows like a liquid. However, upon electroactivation, a crystalline structure is induced, giving it the properties of a solid. It is poured through a microcapillary system throughout the suit, where high accuracy and strength microelectrical fields can induce the crystallization geometry process and cause the deformation along the desired axis. So when the user sends the neurological signal for voluntary movement to their skeletal muscles, the suit interprets the signal and sends the relevant electrical signal to the capillary system surrounding the desired muscle groups. The material mechanically deforms and creates movement. It practically scales and amplifies the user's strength and features an optimization of the crystalline geometries not available to previous Mjolnir versions, giving the user around five times their unarmored strength and increases the reaction time by a factor of five. It is noteworthy to mention that the system cannot be scaled back or limited in any way, so only Spartans with their augmented physiology are able to harness the power of this system. The next layer is the Memory Processing Superconductor Layer, a crystalline material developed to allow AI constructs the processing power to be fully facilitated. This layer allows an AI usually only able to be stored and functional in UNSC ships or facilities to piggyback Mjolnir's systems and travel with the Spartan, assisting in espionage, intelligence operations, tracking, software intrusion and hacking, as well as listening in on enemy communications. This layer is harnessed by the AI via the Spartan Neural Interface. The AI in question occupies the connection between the suit and the brain, allowing it to process information in both the suit and the brain, and in some cases, the AI can optimize the connection between the user and the suit, resulting in very brief periods of immensely increased cognitive and physical capabilities. The most well-known instance of this relationship is that of Master Chief Petty Officer John 117 and UNSC AI Cortana where the symbiotic connection between the two have become legendary across humanity, adding to the Chief's already impressive military and physical accomplishments. Since we're on the subject, the Spartan Neural Interface is an upgrade of the neural interface all UNSC personnel are given at enlistment. It is a filament of semiconductors that interfaces to the cerebral cortex of the host in a similar fashion to electrocorticography implants, but has some key differences. While electrocorticography is achieved by placing sensors on the surface of the brain to monitor brain activity, the Spartan neural interface is implanted within the brain tissue to both passively monitor and actively interface with the cerebral cortex. It is implanted via a complex surgical procedure and once implanted, the interface accesses the basic IFF friend or foe tags that come as standard. It facilitates dual processing of an AI between Yona's embedded memory processing superconductor layer and the host's brain and directly links the brain to Yona's systems, allowing thought to be translated into motion seamlessly via the reactive circuits. The circuits in question increase the reaction time of the user by effectively bypassing the body. Nerves, while extremely good at transmitting chemical messages, still have physical limitations. Due to the natural resistance present in all materials, even electrically conducted ones, it means that the signals have a limit to how fast they can travel from brain to muscle. The average nerve conduction velocity for humans is around 40 to 45 meters per second. Plus, brain and muscle processing time means thought to motion happens in as little as 15 milliseconds. In Spartans, after their augmentations, estimated nerve conduction velocity increases to 120 to 145 meters per second, meaning thought to motion is approximately 5 milliseconds, a 300% increase in reaction time. The reactive circuits take the impulse created by the brain from within the brain, convert it to a digital signal, and send it to the suit's movement systems, since digital signals travel through the suit's circuits at 280 million meters per second. Thought to motion happens so fast, it is nearly impossible to chart. 
Since the systems translate thought to motion faster than the host's nerve conduction velocity, the wearer has to take a long time to get used to the effect, as the user voluntarily sends the signal to move the suit, but the suit moves the user before the user's signals have taken effect. The next layer we come across is the hydrostatic gel layer. The hydrostatic gel is a hydrogelatin, or water-based gel. It is blue in colour and serves the purpose of regulating temperature as well as conforming to the wearer's body for a better fit within Mjolnir. It can also be pressurised to protect the wearer from high g-forces, large impacts and zero ambient pressure. The gel automatically adjusts its pressure based on what the sensor arrays tell the suit, but can also be manually overridden and overpressured to protect the wearer, although it runs a risk of inducing a nitrogen embolism. In the event that the suit takes on excessive heat, for example for sustained or high energy plasma fire, Mjolnir has an exhaust port built into the suit that releases the gel, preventing the occupant from being burned or boiled alive. Sustained damage to the suit can cause this gel layer to become viscous, rendering either partially or completely ineffective. The hydrostatic gel layer also features an armor lock system, where the gel's density is altered to completely seize up the entire system into a rigid posture. Doing so prevents muscle and joint injury from high impact, rendering the suit and the wearer completely stationary. Embedded into this layer are various automatic biofoam injectors. Biofoam is an elastoprotein wound filler. It is an expandable, sterile spray with a local anaesthetic, clotting agent and antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties. If the wearer becomes injured, the biofoam injectors activate and fill the wound with biofoam, sealing the wound, stemming the bleeding and giving some pain relief. The biofoam doesn't heal the user as such, and these serious injuries will still require medical attention. More superficial injuries can be repaired by the Mark VI's inbuilt medical administration kits. These kits contain stem cell treatment sprays and nanomachines to aid in tissue regeneration and healing, and although it's still advisable to seek medical attention where possible, these features allow a Spartan to remain operationally effective for much longer than your average soldier. The inner skin suit is a skin-tight compression layer, covering all of the body including feet, toes, hands, fingers and head up to the face line. It is a moisture wicking layer designed to draw sweat away from the body and is also filled with temperature sensors that link to the hydrostatic gel layer for temperature regulation. It also features wireless direct bone conduction earphones to allow the communication gear inside the helmet to link directly to the earphones. The suit also features water recycling systems for urine purification enabling the user to function for longer periods of time in environments with low water supply. And now the face of Mjolnir, the helmet. Made of the same titanium as the armour plating, the helmet contains a full heads-up display built into the gold reflective polarised visor, capable of displaying mission critical and situational awareness data. A visual display from the motion sensors is visible with the yellow blip showing as friendly units, white as neutral units and red as foes. The systems inside also detect the weapon being held and display a targeting reticle matched to the angle and trajectory of the barrel and thus the rounds to be fired. It gives a visual image of the weapon being held and its current ammunition capacity, all being fed from the weapon in question or calculated by the system itself. The shield recharge bar is clearly visible and the system detects incoming fire trajectory by checking which shield emitters are taking the incoming fire and displaying a red directional haze around the targeting reticle to give the user visual guide to incoming fire. The visor comes with built-in zoom function, effectively magnifying the light coming through the visor and redisplaying it in a zoomed aspect ratio. It also has a smart scope system, able to link wirelessly with weapons with scopes and display the scope view as a full face display, particularly good for long range shooting accuracy. The system also detects any holstered weapons or grenades and can display waypoints, objectives and place markers above friendly units heads and target units, and a visual compass is also visible by default. Many additional pieces of information can be displayed ad hoc based on the needs of the time. The Spartan can access the systems menu where various diagnostic tools, features and rosters can be accessed. The helmet has an ultra clear microphone array and speaker array built into the helmet to allow the user to hear outside of the suit sealed systems, as well as communicate both out loud and over radio communications. The helmet also makes the physical connection between the Spartan neural interface and the suit enabling the full speed and power of the suit to be harnessed, although, even when the helmet is removed, the user can still move and function, but at greatly reduced speed and efficiency. The link between the neural interface and the suit really comes into its own in regards to the helmet, as all of the internal functions of the helmet's systems are accessible and usable via the neural interface, 
The user simply thinks about what they want to do and the system recognises it and adjusts accordingly. No need for a secondary interface. To control the helmet systems, just think of it and the system does it. The helmet also contains an air filtration system. The air intake is on the left side of the helmet just below the jawline. The air is pulled in and filtered through a high efficiency particulate arrestant or HEPA class 20 filter, a high efficiency gas absorption or HEGA filter and an ultra low penetration air filter or ULPA, all together capable of filtering 100% of particulates, toxins, pathogens and molecules from the air. The air is pumped into the helmet just left of the mouth and exhaled air is sucked out of the exhaust vent just right of the mouth passing through yet more filters to the external exhaust vent. In the event that the suit enters a vacuum or underwater, the external vents can be sealed and a rebreather unit activates for up to 45 minutes of breathable air. The helmet also houses a torch and mission camera as well as connection hardpoints for various additional systems to be directly connected to the helmet. The helmet also makes the final connection seal in the pressure suit and is fully supported by the suit so the user doesn't feel the weight of the helmet. The size, scale and complexity of the helmet complements and finalises the overall dominating and legendary silhouette of the Mjolnir Mark VI powered assault armour in every possible sense. Mjolnir Mark VI increases strength and speed by a factor of 5. It is impervious to small arms fire, resistant to most high velocity AP rounds and plasma and directed energy weapons. It is completely sealed to vacuum, water, weather, EMP, radiation and toxic environments and gives unequalled situational awareness, mobility, power and efficiency on the battlefield. It is a suit of armour so tremendous in its capability, so iconic in its design and appearance and so ruthlessly powerful and complex to be truly worthy of its use by the Spartan II super soldiers and most iconically by Master Chief himself. With dozens of additional peripheral systems that can enhance the suit's function still further, and the constant iteration and innovation being made to the newer versions of the suit, we can expect some truly sensational developments in the near and distant future. It has been a privilege to be able to assess this magnificent suit to this level of detail and I would like to thank the UNSC and the Office of Naval Intelligence for this opportunity and you for joining me on this breakdown. There we have it. If you've made it this far, you deserve a medal. This is a re-upload of an original video I uploaded about a year ago as a one-off, but the original was so well received that I figure it was time I redo the terrible audio quality and re-release it on this channel as the first of a new, most detailed breakdown video series where I will dive into obscene detail in anything that takes my fancy or anything you suggest. I already have some suggestions I'm working on, but if you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more stuff like this, let me know and subscribe and I'll see what I can do. Thanks guys. Installation 00, out.